Today we'll recap a 2008 Australian psychological horror film named Lake Mungo, written and directed by Joel Anderson. Alice drowns while swimming and her family begins experiencing inexplicable events in their home. The family hires a parapsychologist, whose investigation unveils Alice's secret double life and leads them all to Lake Mungo. Kindly remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked the video. At the beginning of the movie, we are shown news in which it is told that Alice, a 16-year-old girl, has disappeared from near the dam while picnicking with her family. Police have started searching for her and water everywhere but her body is not traceable. Actually, throughout this movie, we see different characters talking in interviews. All of them are telling things related to Alice and by the end of the story. We will understand how Alice died and how it is all related to the past and future. First, we see Alice's brother Matthew who tells that he came out after swimming but Alice did not come out. He thought that maybe she wanted to swim for some more time. So he did not pay much attention and left from there. Next, Alice's father Russell tells that Matthew informed him about Alice's missing. After which they went there and saw that there was no movement in the water. Matthew also tells that when he went there, Alice's towel was lying outside. Which means, she had not come out of the water and this could mean that she must have drowned in the water. Then the police ask them to go home and says that they will inform them as soon as they find anything. Next, we see Alice's grandparents, who tell that Russell called them at about 9 o'clock in the night and informed them about the accident that Alice had gone missing. Then Alice's boyfriend Jason tells that he came to know about this accident from Alice's mother, and Alice's friend Kim could not believe it. Russell tells the interviewer that he still keeps the house lights on at night, hoping that she will return one day. Next, we are shown a video in which the police tell that their rescue team has found a body in the water with the help of sonar, and now Alice's parents are called there to identify it. June tells that she could not get out of the car to identify her body, as she could not see her in that condition. Now that body actually comes out of Alice itself, and due to being underwater for a long time, her condition had become very bad. Then Russell tells that 10 days after Alice's funeral, stuff started happening around the house. Noises from the roof and sounds coming from outside the window, and other movements that seemed to come from Alice's old room. He got the door of her room checked and also took the help of pest control but it did not make any difference. Then June also shares a similar experience. She tells of a frightening dream in which she sees Alice coming from hell and water dripping from her wet clothes, after which she stands near her bed. She says that now these dreams are getting worse, so she often goes on a walk at night so that she does not have to sleep. She is so upset with all this that she goes to people's houses at night so that she does not remember all this. Russell too was busy with his office work throughout the day to divert his attention. On the other hand, Matthew was fond of photography, so he often used to take photographs, and one day in a photo of his backyard, he captured Alice, which was very surprising, because about six months had passed since Alice was dead. But from this, it seemed to June that maybe Alice was still alive and she wanted to talk to them. June assumes that there may have been a mistake in identifying Alice's body from Russell, as the corpse was in very bad condition. After this, her body is taken out of the grave and it is confirmed by DNA tests that the body was Alice's. June tells that Alice was buried again after two days. But the question was if Alice is dead, then who was in that photo? Now to find out, Matthew puts a camera in the house, so that he could know something. On the very first night, they find someone going from the lawn area to the hall. Then, June contacts a psychic named Ray for consultation. Ray does a radio show and June also came to know about him from there. Now June goes to Ray for a session where he asks her to think about her house. He asks her to go inside the house and tell him what she is seeing. Now she reaches outside Alice's room where she sees her shoes outside her room. Now Ray asks her to go inside her room. Upon entering, June tells him that Alice is sitting on a wicker chair and she looks sad. Now Ray tells that he had asked them to do a seance in their house, on which Matthew and June agreed, but Russell refused. Then later Matthew persuaded him by talking to him. Now we see the footage of that seance where they do not find anything in it. That's why they quit it after an hour. But the next day when Matthew checked the footage, he found Alice's image in it. Russell tells that the image was so clear that it was impossible to dismiss it. There was something inexplicable in their house that was beyond doubt. After this, Ray and Matthew together set up three permanent cameras in the house, which were used to record 24 hours. 
Now Ray tells that he had never seen a ghost before and that something was happening in this house. That he wanted to find out what it was. Camera footage of Alice's room is then shown, in which Alice is clearly visible in her mirror. Now Russell tells that before he could think of this video, he come across another video made by his neighbors Kathy and Doug, and it was a video of the same place where Alice disappeared. When they came home and checked that video, they saw a figure in the background which they thought might have captured Alice, but on zooming, they came to know that it was Matthew and not Alice. Then Matthew reveals that it was him who was wearing Alice's jacket. He saw a man taking his photo so he walked off through the bushes, but he did not see that the Withers were over there filming. Now when the footage of Wither came out, he told his dad that he had edited all the videos and photos of Alice. He tells how he created that image by combining an old photo of Alice and a photo of the backyard. And he played an old video of Alice on TV and reflected it in the mirror and made footage. And he did so to give her mother hope for Alice to be alive. Then he decides to meet Ray. And on going there he sees that many people have come there who have lost someone close to them. Then, he tells in the interview that before going to Ray he had put the cameras in the hall and was out for three days. And when he came back home, he found that there is really someone in the video. And this time he didn't make any edits. Now June tells that she and Russell were at home when all this was recorded, and the video seemed to be proved that there was Alice's ghost in their house. June then tells that while she was looking at footages again, she noticed something in the hallway image. In it, apart from Matthew, she also saw another figure who was sitting in Alice's darkroom. At first, she thought she was Alice, but then she realized that it was their neighbor, Brett. Now June was in doubt about what that man was doing in Alice's room more than six months after her death. Then when she opened Alice's safe, she realized why he had come there. He was actually looking for a tape. Here we learn that Alice used to work part-time babysitting at Brett's house. When they watch that tape, in that tape, Alice was getting intimate with Brett and his wife. Upon learning of all this, Russell angrily says that if he finds Brett, he will kill him. Even Alice's friends do not believe that Alice could have done such a thing, and her boyfriend is also very shocked to find out that he too was completely unaware of it. Next, police officer Sandy tells that Brett has vacated the house from here but they are looking for him. But after watching the video it is clear that whatever was happening was happening with the will of Alice. Therefore, it is also not right to hold Brett responsible for this. After this we see footage in which Alice has come to Ray. But Ray kept this thing hidden from everyone that he had met Alice before. In the recording, he was hypnotizing Alice and questioning what she was seeing. Alice had actually come to him in connection with the frightening dreams that she was having. Ray tells that she was looking very sad. Here Alice's parents say that now they do not trust Ray because he kept such a big thing hidden from them. Next, June is reading Alice's diary, in which it was written that she sees herself drenched in water in her dreams and feels weak. She goes to her mother's room in fear and stands near her bed, but then she realizes that she cannot help her, so she sits there crying. Then on the next few pages of the diary, Lake Mungo was written. Then June tells that Lake Mungo is in southwestern New South Wales, where Alice had gone to her school camp. And when she came back home, she did not have her phone, bracelet, or watch. Then, Jason shows them some videos of the trip recorded on Kim's phone, in which all the girls are having a lot of fun at Lake Mungo. But Alice was sitting down under a tree apart from them all. After watching the clip many times, they came to know that she was bearing something there. Then Kim tells that during that time Alice's phone was lost, so maybe she was upset because of that. So she did not pay much attention to her. Then, Russell and June go to Lake Mungo. And after digging that place, June finds a bag there which contains all the lost things of Alice. Now seeing this, Russell starts wondering why Alice must have done this. He then charges her phone and upon turning it on, they find a recording in which they see the same dead face of Alice. Now June realizes that Alice knew she was going to die, and that's why she must have gone to Ray for consultation. Then a few days later, June tells that now she is feeling at peace in the house, and now they started living a normal life again. Maybe Alice wanted to tell them all this. Then, one day suddenly Ray comes to their house, and then he has a session with June in which he asks her some questions. Now everything June tells him matches exactly what Alice told him. This means what is happening in the present was already seen by Alice in her dreams. Like June tells that she is going to the hallway and Alice told that she sees her mother in the hallway. And then June tells that she is going to her room but she doesn't see Alice. And Alice told that her mother is coming to her room but maybe she is not able to see her. Next, 
We see that they vacate the house and leave. And then we are shown a photo in which June Russell and Matthew are standing outside their house. And in the back window, we can see the spirit of Alice. And in a photo of the backyard, Alice is also seen sitting and the movie ends here. Thanks for watching.